How's it going guys? It's going off grid and today we are going to make a little I guess solar generator or battery and inverter in a case essentially. It's more or less a waterproof case. Got me a low frequency 3000 watt inverter. Got a 70 amp hour. I believe this is 70 amp hour. I gotta read the sides. It's 60 or 70 amp hours. And then I think I'm gonna mount some DeWalt chargers on top. Two DeWalt chargers and then so this will more or less just be an extra power station for charging DeWalt batteries with the option of a plug. Charge cell phones and whatever else. And uh, yeah, so let's get this build underway. Okay, so I've moved on to making some cables. These cables are extremely overkill and not needed. Six gauge, I'm moving to eight gauge. Uh, it's only gonna be for 300 watts two chargers so this will be plenty plus those I need, I need those for something else so the batteries are going to be double stacked here or double stacked here and one here I think that's what I, I'm going to do it we'll see I'm not sure yet I'm still configuring but uh, this is how they're going to lay essentially in the box because two tall can fit but three tall cannot and so I'm just mocking up my wires drop it in hook up my BMS this is a 35 amp BMS That'll work in conjunction with a 300 watt inverter. Uh, you guys haven't seen this side yet, I don't think. So there is the outputs. The switch is under here. And so you just slide your finger up from underneath and click on or off. And yeah, so that'll protect the switch from the elements, uh, the plug. There's a little drip edge here that hopefully will protect it, but the plug is the plugs are more or less designed to get a little bit of moisture, but the less moisture the sees the better. Okay, got the BMS hooked up. Got the batteries more or less where they're going to sit. They're just going to sit sideways. Hook it up to the inverter. Get a charger in there, and start finishing up. Got to mount everything, fasten everything down, and give her a test drive. All right. So I've gone a little bit ahead of myself here for filming, but we got the batteries installed, uh, not mounted yet, inverter installed, not mounted as well, uh, 10 amp charger, uh, 100 watts approximately, 120 watts ish. Um, we got the cord coming out here, and I'm just going to epoxy it in spot so that you plug in here, it's out of the way where it's not going to hit anything, it's not going to hit your hand. Um, what else we got to do? I just tidied up a little bit. So when you close it, that's what you're going to see. Essentially, in the, well, there's going to be DeWalt chargers on top as well. And yeah, I'm just waiting. I got my uh, my epoxy by the heater heating up because epoxy does not like hardening properly in the cold. And yeah, this uh, project's coming along nicely. And I even got extra space for if I ever want to put like a little charge controller in here later for solar. Solar on the side. I believe these were 60 or 70 amp hour cells. I can't remember. They might only be 50. 50, 60, 70, something like that. Uh, I've had these for a very long time and I cannot remember what they are. But uh, this will be a 12.6 volt max charge system. This runs down to about nine, nine and a half volts, which will be perfect. That's three volts a cell. That's more or less dead anyways. And uh, we're going to give this a try after. I checked the balance of the cells. The cells are very, very closely balanced. And, uh, yeah. Can't wait to get this finished and try it out. And there it is. <clears throat> Just waiting on the spray from the dry. I'm going to cut it and... Make it so it looks a little bit better. I might put some cap on tape on top to make everything yellow so it matches. But uh, we got our plug here secured. The epoxy is drying. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to put vents in this or not for the inverter. I know it's going to get warm, but I wonder if there's going to be enough thermal through the plastics to keep it cool or not. I'm going to do some testing because I would like to keep this as airtight as possible because I do work in an environment where there's a ton of sawdust so I would like to keep this thing without a big giant vent here but if I do put a vent maybe I'll put a little filter there I'll basically make it so no air can get through with the filter anyways but yeah looking pretty good I might just keep this as is and not put the chargers on top I'm not sure
kind of like the look of it. It's sleek, it's fairly small. And what is this? So if this is 70 amp hours, it's around 800 watt hours. If this is 50 amp hours, what is it? Uh, something like 500 watt hours or 550. Anyways, we'll have to put a kilowatt meter on it and charge it fully and give her a test run. Okay, we more or less have the finished product of the DIY solar generator or power station. It would be more accurate. Right now, all I have on this thing is AC outlets. No uh, outlets for USB or DC out yet. I plan on adding a 30 amp Anderson power pole connectors and two uh, USB outlets and a battery meter. I'm, I was thinking about going digital with something like this, but I, I have a, a battery meter coming. It's analog, well, it's not analog. It's, it's, it's kind of analog. It uses lights and it has your like a power bar. I think that'll be good enough for me. I'll be happy with that. Uh, really, really, really happy with this charging method here. It works so good. I just pulled the, the plug through a hole. I cut it the right size and then epoxied it in. I really like the spot where I put it. <coughs> anyway, so I'm thinking, well, what can we power? What can we, can we run with this? And I was like, well, it would be really nice to be able to run a chop saw with it. But it's only a 300 watt inverter. So what do we need to use in conjunction to be able to use this chop saw? Or can we even use it? It might still be unusable. Well, we got the, my little uh, cord I made, my soft starter cord, so all we need is the resist, resistive load to add to it, and let's see what we can find. Okay, we got a resistive load, which is a heater set to the 500 watt setting. That is a bit too much for this inverter, but this inverter does have a good surge because it is a low frequency inverter, so it'll surge at least 600 watts, maybe 900 watts, but all that is still too much for the BMS. The BMS has a little bit of surge capacity, but not too much. So we got to be careful. We got the inverter on already in our GFCI uh, outlet. There we go. Now, just to show that this is running off of this inverter. Nothing. Plug this in. Now this is running through that heater. Let's see if it'll run. Oh, it's running. Not with a lot of ohm for anything, but you can see that the, the heater turns on for a bit when I turn it on. Yeah, let's try 1500 watts, just for fun. See what happens. This could blow the BMS, but we'll see. Oh, running it. And I believe we overloaded. Yes, you can see a red light on the inverter inside. We did, in fact, overload. Okay, I'm going to reset the inverter. As you can see, to be able to spin this that fast, that was not 300 watts. That was quite a bit more. I want to te check the temperature of my BMS as well, but the 1500 watt setting. So that with splitting with the voltage between two appliances, that was not even close to 1500 watts. That was probably closer to about 700 watts running into the saw. That's why it was still starting up so slowly. But just the fact that a 300 watt inverter can start it. But I wonder if we can cut anything with it. That's the question. All right, crunch time. The resistive load on the soft start is set up on the 500 watt setting on the heater. Got two by four here. This is going to make a mess, but you know what? This is too fun not to try. We're going to let it gain some, some momentum. Nope, not very well, that's for sure. Now I wonder, I really do wonder exactly how much we are loading this thing. And we are, we're charged through right now, so we're charging and running off at the same time. 100 watts coming in and whatever we take out. So as we're taking more than 100 watts out. You could use this as like a UPS type deal as long as you're running less than 100 watts, but yeah, it just takes too much power. Obviously, it's not capable, but 
Anyways, if we if this was 600 watts, I think we would be able to actually cut through this. Like even if we put this on the 1500 watt setting, let's see if we can actually cut with it. It started cutting, and we went into overload again. Yep, but it was actually cutting and actually holding its momentum too. It's just this is a toy. This is not meant for this whatsoever. I just wanted to see if if we could do anything with it. It just shows that if you're desperate enough and you made something like this, you could cut something. Sure, it would take you a long time to cut it, but it would definitely cut it. Okay, so, slight change of plans. I'm not really happy with the charge times on this because it's it re it's more or less the same as any other uh, solar generator on the market where it charges like 10% per hour. I would rather 20% per hour. Or maybe even 30% per hour. So I'm going to add another 10 amp charger. This is going to be two. This one's going to go right here. That's where that one's going to go, essentially. It'll actually help keep the battery, uh, like, it's just spray foam glued in. I'll do a little bit more around this charger. You'll be able to see the green light a little easier than on this one. This one, you could only see it. Where was it now? Is it right there? No, it's on this side. You can only see the side of it right there. So this one you'll be able to see it better, it'll charge twice as fast, and I'm still going to use the exact same outlet, I'm just going to splice into the wire, because this wire can hold a lot more than 100 watts. And let's get to it. Okay, got the battery, I don't know, power station, whatever you want to call it here. I haven't trimmed anything yet. What I want to do eventually is trim it and put some of that, uh, uh, that stuff there, the white cord cardboard stuff. Um, fill the cracks and just make it look all nice and tidy and cut all this stuff off but it's being held in nicely it's got 200 watts of charging power 20 amps going in it can charge this in about two and a half to three hours i haven't actually checked it, it that should be what it charges in i haven't killed it and fully charged it yet so i don't know um but i'm going to be running my computer all night off of it and then Charging it again tomorrow and see uh, where we're at. But right now I'm adding this little power meter volt uh, display and two USB ports. So that's cool. It's not going to be quick charge or anything. I doubt it. If you get two amps of these USB ports, I would be very surprised. So I'm guessing it's going to be more like uh, one amp charge. But I'm just about to cut my hole where I'm going to put it. I'm going to tap it in right into the main and that's it. Let's get to it. For those of you with generators, just a reminder to run them once every once in a while so your carbs don't go bad. Very, very cold. Started quite nicely actually. I broke the, I broke the choke off one day, the choke button. So the only way it starts now is either with the remote, or I have to put it in full auto mode, and then it, it, it figures itself out. But if I really can't get it started, I use the remote, and it starts. And we'll walk over. This is the Freedom Convoy. We got our other generator. This is the noisy one. Just running it, just keep it... Uh, the cards from going bad. Okay. Shut this so it's not so loud. There we go. Da -da -da. Got that battery charging. Got the DIY generator here. I got a few more things to add to it. I got some 12 volt terminals I'm going to be adding. And where that switch go? Got a switch as well. Huh. Lost the switch though. Oh, here it is. I'm going to add this switch for this meter. I'm just going to put it right underneath it. Just so it, it's not always on because it does drain a little bit of power because it is running a little buck step down for the USBs. Uh... What I've found is it charges to 80% really fast, about, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours. No, probably at least two hours, something like that. And then 
after that it takes a long time to get to a hundred like another like four or five hours to get to a hundred percent but uh, we got a spare meter same thing there I'm thinking about putting another one on this side but not right now I'm just keeping it as a spare but I want to add the switch and I want to add these lugs these lugs will always be live You'd literally be just directly hooked to that battery through the BMS all right so I got the new lugs mounted I like where they're mounted they're mounted quite nicely and they're far enough from each other they'll never touch now this side is really easy I had a bolt here where I had to bolt all my uh, connections together I'm just gonna take the bolt out and I'm gonna stick it on this positive and then from the negative down here that I have bolted together I have to run a wire all the way to this side that's not a big deal and then I'm going to add my switch right here. And this thing will be almost done. I got a 24 volt, I mean a 12 volt, uh, 240 watt charge controller, MPPT. It's all, it's a waterproof one. I'm going to be put, mounting it here somewhere, hooking it all up. I got to figure out we're going to put my solar panel connector. It'll either be Anderson power poles or it's going to be um, MC4 connectors. But either way, I'm going to have that mounted on here. So this will be a fully uh, contained unit that can and take uh, AC and solar. So that'll be pretty neat. It's going to be essentially the exact same thing as what you can buy on the market. A bunch of companies make this. This is, I have tested it. This is a proper... 500 watt hour battery bank so I'm pretty happy with it it's actually that's 500 watt hours usable so that means there's quite a bit more because this shuts off at 10 volts anyways let's get to the next video and check out that this is how I crimp all my connections with a hydraulic crimper right there it's a cheapy or it used to be cheap everything's expensive nowadays but uh, yeah, so this side goes to here, and then I run this all the way to the main negative. So this will, you can draw off these, you cannot charge through these. Because these are going through the output on the BMS, there's a separate wire, this is a three wire BMS, so it has a charge in and uh, a pull out only. So, yeah, it's coming along nicely. Okay, so we got everything wired up, here's our switch and meter. The switch turns on, meter turns on, USB charging turns on. I found out this meter is 1 volt low. It's at 12.5 with the multimeter is actually at 12.6 on the money. Then we got our two positive and negatives. This is going through the 30 or 35 amp BMS. This I'll be using with a trolling motor. You can always use that for electric cooler or whatever else you want to run it as well. And yeah, pretty happy with it. Nice little little unit. So the plugs in the back. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And this battery is still charging. It's got a lot of power. I can